All right. No cold intro today. We're getting into it. All right. Hello. This is Vibrating Sheep. This is also episode number 236 of Grand Blue Radio. This one's titled Happy Little Trees and Boiled Little Crabs for reasons that you'll find out soon. Uh, anyway, so uh, as I mentioned, I'm Vibrating Sheep over at Grand Blue underscore EN. And uh, first officer over here, my Unite and Fight crew officer skill bot. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's happening, yeah. I guess. Uh, hi, this is DJ. <laughs> hey, DJ. So I've been, I've been exploring uh, Japan. It's not Japan, it's Inazuma, all right? Uh, it's, just, it's Japan. Anyways. Apparently you're having a better time than all the people who are jumping into po Pokemon Unite, but we'll talk about that offline. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard about how toxic it is in there? There's no skill-based matchmaking yet, so people are just getting stomped all the time. I mean, there are people who always put up the argument there should never be skill-based ma matchmaking, and then, you know, this thing happens. So, you know. All right, so anyway... Um... Points-based matchmaking in Unite and Fight. We've talked about that one a little bit. That, that at least is a little bit... Whatever. Doesn't matter. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about happy little trees. So... Did you, did right you know that I, Unite and Fight. Did, did you know that I actually haven't played Higdrazel in the EMP era? Oh. She has five EMPs, and I'm like, oh... <laughs> I mean, what do you need? The boost of skill? Uh, to healing cap? Oh, maybe, actually. Like, this character was left behind a long time ago, and it wasn't necessarily because of the skills. Like, the skills didn't help. But really, it was the fact that in order to press buttons, she uses 30 meter. Yep, I remember that. And it's like, is that really... what? What's worth 30 meter to you, DJ? Aww... Triple strike. Double yeah. strike costs 30 meter on Zeto when she hits it. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Actually, no, the triple attacking costs 30 meter on Zeta, I think. Or it costs all of her meter, technically. But And then, like, I, I've paid 30 meter for Christmas Narmea um, Chaser very frequently, because that one's also quite worth it. But just, like... This one gave you a medium boost to attack and defense. On a normal body thing? Yeah. And it gave you charge meter for three turns, but it cost you 10 meter. And then this one gave you a medium amount of crit. Um, please ignore the part of the extra things. And it gave you a, a small shield for 20% meter. These be 2,000 shield. Ugh. For three turns only, by the way. Yeah, yeah. A shield that only lasted three turns. This was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. So and now she's caught up with the game. Yeah, yeah. So they did part of the Tiamat thing, but as we've said a bunch of times, they learned a lot from what they did with Tiamat. So she's actually kind of better at crest support and crest specific support than Tiamat is. So I think that's... Earth has a lot of crest to go around. Yeah, I mean, Christmas Magisa, we've got uh, Mireille and Rosette who use uh, crests, um, Cagliostro, Medusa. Medusa, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of characters uh, scattered around who can use those uh, those crests pretty well. Um, so, all right. Step one, yeah, her new CA, it, one, does uh, a Wasteland crest, two, it... Gives her, it heals her for four thousand now, which matters a lot because back when she was uh, maybe a tank, but probably not a tank. She was kind of bad at tanking. She had she has both hostility up and hostility down in her EMPs. That tells you a lot yeah. about where they just didn't know what to do with her. Look, if you want, if you put hostility down on her, she no longer tanks. Yeah. <laughs> God. But now you actually want her to tank, and hey, when she CAs, she she heals herself. It's an important thing when you're a tank. 4,000 is not a small amount of heal either, so it's pretty nice. Yeah. And then the improved Ziggurat is huge. So number number one thing, no longer eats meter when it has three crests. Super important. However, the other thing that it does um, that is a, an important quality of life thing is that the shield is indefinite duration, like other shields now, instead of just being three turns long. Yeah, that was pretty bad. 
<laughs> Jeez. And it increases by almost double. It goes to 3,500. And then, yeah. When, when, it, when she has three crests and it transforms... Oh, baby. <laughs> so It doesn't she, consumer crest either, right? No. And so this is the thing that they improved on with uh, the Tiamat design. Because when Tiamat changes to Supercell, she doesn't give the rest of the team crests anymore. Um, and, yeah, um, the level 100 to, to skill 1 will actually keep giving everyone crests while skill 2 is the one that transforms. So mm, That's really good. It's an improved design there. And then, yeah, for, for these three turns, right? For these three turns, she substitutes for three turns, a la, like, Soriz or someone like that. Um, it doesn't eat all attacks, so it, it keeps, you know, um, Summer Alex right where she is, basically. Uh, she gets armored for... 50% reduced. Yeah, 50% is pretty high. <laughs> That's a really big number, yeah, for 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 armor. When she takes damage, she just nukes after she get uh, she gets hit. Four hits. In a, in an element that either has world ender or just has a lot of skill cap up, if you want it, with Lobelia in the back line. And her skill cooldowns go down by one when she gets hit. And as someone who has a level one twenty Fior, this is the most fun thing in the world. You're just like, yes, hit me. You just need to use punch three turns in a row, and she she has a cooldown back up. Yeah. Like, do you remember the old down back Earth team, DJ? Uh, Sarah, Yaya, Arulamea. Arulu, yeah. It was it was called it was the shorty squad, the shorty de invincible shorty defense squad, and it's just like, oh, well, now you have you have Yggdrasil to take a lot of this. She probably I'm still did. laughing that Ayaya couldn't actually get targeted. <laughs> they had to change the rules of the game for Ayaya. Yeah. All right. And then, um, so the level ninety-five thing is that she gets. Uh, where is that one? It's an upgrade to Anima Eternus. That's right. So not only the so she has the amp damage uh, against. Uh, water by 20%. She has her own seraphic, which is neat, but it usually do you usually don't end up actually cutting the uh, seraphic weapon anymore because of the 4 star on them. However, it's like a 3% difference, right? It's a 3% difference. Sometimes sometimes you can justify it, but 3% seraphic is not to be sniffed at. Um but she also gets a backline crest passive of increasing healing and a couple of those crest characters that we talked about already have incidental heals um, you have incidental healing from if you're using like the opus harp as a main hand you get healing from a crest character with Cagliostro from Christmas Magisa so or it, so if you just have crests lying around then you just heal for more it's nice I mean the also upgrade was also when she's in front row uh, and play works to everybody which right. frees up a, which does help free up a slot. Some and Earth has like the most crowded slots possible in any grid because you just are constantly weighing like twenty different weapons in a, a grid that fits tw uh, ten slots, and then one of those slots is very often going to be the Anubis staff because of the fact that you probably have climb in the back row. Yeah, and so you know sometimes sometimes you can use this character slot for a very good tank and a um, substitute for your um, Gauntlet of Uriel, and, you know, you can do that. Alright. Uh, the last thing that she gains, level 100, we've mentioned one part of it with her skill 1, where she uh, gives a crest on everything. Her um, meter up to the team go uh, becomes essentially uh, essentially permanent because it goes to five turns long and it's on a six turn cooldown on a character who gets hit to reduce cooldowns. Yeah. And then the attack and defense up uh, change from um, to 50% each instead of 25% each. It's still and they are undisavailable. Yeah. It's still um, on the attack is still on the normal mod but that's not the part that matters. It's fifty percent defense, defense up. Fifty percent defense up, undispellable. <laughs> she 
she's really good now. I love what they did. Like I, I play a lot of uh, EO, and I love having that defense up. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I play with a lot of like, heck, backline um, Hasalia, and it's still worth it to have defense up. As the game goes on, like we're we're focusing away from pure offense because these characters are just so ridiculous in some some ways, and then you're just like, oh. This defense is really nice because now I don't have to care about anything else. And then we still eat like white damage anyways. We still eat white damage or as you may have seen in whenever I stream Belial runs, I'm just like, oh, I have taken 65,000 damage. Okay. <laughs> he just punched me out, out of my uh, garrison. All right. Anything else to say about the happy little tree? I'm re ready to use her during United fights. I am so ready to full auto with this character. I'm I'm have, ready. Have I actually showed you my full auto team? No. What's it like? I mean, part of it you can kind of expect what it's gonna who's gonna be on it. So Yggdrasil, Diantha, and then who? Uh, and then Gag. That's a pretty solid one. All right. Mine will probably I'll, I'll probably limit test to see just how stupid I can get before toning down, so I'll probably start with like Cavalier, Vazaraga, and Zeta, like one tank of some kind, maybe Summer Alex, and then someone else who just only knows attack. And see if I can just finish this in three turns. Who knows? Yeah, you probably could. My my main goal is I just want to play Diantha. I mean that is a noble goal. I want to play Vazaraga and Zeta, so uh that's that's fair. Like i I'm enjoying the characters who are coming out in this Unite and Fight. Uh, like I, I just looked at my Diantha's uh, uh, earring. It's Emity. <laughs> <laughs> good, good job. Like uh oh, her, her ring is also Emity. What happened here? <laughs> mm, mm. So yeah. Meanwhile, like Tone's living his best life because a bunch of the, his favorite characters are getting pulled out for this. Like um, he's enjoying the fact that he get, he gets to use Arulamea because she gives plus ten meter to the team. Like he's enjoying using Pengi. Like a bunch of his favorites. Fiorito. It's coming out for him in his uh his uh like nightmare teams. Nice. Yeah, I get to use uh, Golden Knight Oigen as a combo because I've been talking about that combo for like two years. Anyway, um, so speaking of characters who came out for Unite and Fight, so oh. uh, we're, we'll start with the big one, the the one who made the biggest splash. No pun intended. Boo. So. So, uh, Paint Huffer herself came out with a, uh, a summer version. Um, so, I'm just gonna scroll all the way down to, uh, to talk about what she's done to the game before I even talk about her skills, because her passive is 40%... Uh, summer prank. 40% to everybody's meter at the start of the fight. Like, you remember last year when we were just like, how is this character okay with Mim Lemel? And she had a button to give everyone plus 70. Yeah. And now we're just casually like, oh, all right, Ilnot. So now you don't even have to press a button. It's only it's only 40%. But, you all know, you she... need is uh, Huang Wong or something. Yeah. Or, you know, this uh, this thing that came out earlier uh, this year in Earth, Tsuchinoko, which is Huang Long, but for Earth specifically better. And it lets me do this. I haven't pressed a button. It's not you know. It's not strike time. We're just casually overshooting, honestly, because I'm doing this with the Kaguya. It's wild. Uh, well, this is also Belial's fault, so you know. But like, I super overshot the mark by like six million damage. So yeah, yeah uh, Tenth uh, Tech actually has my. Uh... Not so hidden thoughts about Earth. Because, yeah, because clearly what Earth needed uh, was more fair and balanced limited characters. Like we were, we were talking about this in other channels, and it's just like Earth is in such a state that we looked at this character and we went, she changes out exactly one situation, and it's our, it's a mild debate on how much she improves that one situation. Uh, 
All right, in zero turn, she's completely crazy, right? Because of that plus 40 meter. You yeah. now can do so many more things. Like, before I had her, I was doing, like, Huang Long plus Tsuji Noko. I had to have, like, the Belial, blah, blah, blah. With with her, I can zero button it and not even think about it. It's like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's move on to her actual skills. So, her actual skills are kind of cool. Okay, so we start with the Alanon slash fairy button. So, eat everyone's meter. Four turns of being shorted. Four turns of guaranteed triple attack. Four turns of ch big chaser. Yeah, it's, it's a boring button at this point. It is. Um, then, but uh, so, certain characters uh, like this a lot. Certain characters like this a lot, like the main character when the main character is a luchador. I know a lot of people complain about luchador multi-attack when the luchador class exists to press tag team. So it helps the it helps the main character. It helps a few, you know, um, multi-attack teams. But uh, pretty boring button. You're right. It's uh, I mean, it it works with her summer prank in that it's a. Instead of having to run a specific Mim level Alanon combo to get this thing going on turn one in fire, you just she just has to exist. Yeah. So you do that. Um, this next, the other uh, big thing that she does is something that uh, people usually sacrifice near to do and has like a big drawback when you do it for near. So going back to one turn comps. Or two turn comps, or yeah, like Gorilla Keelan being like a big popular thing that Earth does. So for five turns, attack down, defense down, multi attack down, supplemental damage. Uh, can't be recast, lasts only five turns. The defense down is the full 50%. Mm hmm. So once again, like the only thing that I know of that does the full 50% in one button is when you summon death to kill near. And that comes with the drawback of you can't heal for what, three turns? And you have also, also also you take it too. Yeah, you take the same debuff. So uh that's a that's a wild one. So that's another like some uh, summer mim level style of like okay. And then we've just covered three of her things here. Um, then the things that actually make her like Fire Illnot, because Fire Illnot is a fun character. I've played her uh, extensively in just things like Prouds and Proud Pluses, etc. Because she Did doesn't. They, get, they put Gift Shop on a red button. Yeah. So Nuke, Delay, Dispel. Um, and it happens twice if she has a piece. The way that she gets pieces is getting targeted. Not being hit, targeted. Mm -hmm. And then when she CAs, she can cast it as well. So it eats one piece to cast it, and if she has another, yeah, uh, another one. Pieces, it'll, it'll do to activate twice, and mm -hmm. two are consumed. That one isn't as common. You have to have two pieces worth, and that just is two turns without doing anything. But it's neat. Uh, I I do like this part of the design a lot. I I enjoy this part of Ilnot. But yeah, I think I think Tenth Tech and you already said your piece on this character. So, I mean, if we combine with Sandalfon, and then anyways, yeah, like like I said, the the state of Earth right now is so crazy that it's just like okay, so in the specific team of like Luchador, um, like Christmas Narmea, one character that I forget right now, and then Chicken, she removes Chicken. And it's argue it, it it basically only does it to shave a few buttons when you're racing. She completely changes Unite and Fight because with her people are able to, you know, do crazy low button strategies on meat farming and on nightmare. Low button or no button? Yeah, no button at all. You just click the game to auto when you're loading in. Yeah, yeah, that was a uh, that was a big thing that they did. All right, shall we talk about the boy though? C can we move on? Oh, uh, you want? 
You want to talk about how her weapon comes with four star? <laughs> so, her four star weapon is Mr. Funny. Excelsior. Like, you've been calling this it for for months now. Like every time a mystery weapon gets a four star, you're just like it's getting Excelsior. There's only been like two instances where it didn't. <laughs> like, here's the thing: is that in order to get low, so before Summer Illnot came out. I was like, how? I was spending a lot of time in the lab to reduce the amount of buttons in my, uh, my my meat farm to get it as efficient as possible. I didn't want to press any buttons or get it wrong, and so I'm just like, all right, let's invest into this lovely ace. Hey, look, it's mystery and Excelsior. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Uh, like I said, I think the only time I one of the few times I didn't see it was, uh, what's his name, Lucius Sword. Mm -hmm. Cause that one's skill cap, yeah. And that one's funny, but I mean, th those are the two things he does best: is that he nukes and he uh, CAs. Fun character. All right. <laughs> God. We're moving. We're moving on to the boy. Yeah. So Love Sigman, Sigman is actually was actually more popular on release in terms of just interaction on uh, social media. Than Ilnot, for at least the English side of things. The boy, the stupid, sexy Sig man. He 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 lost his, he dropped his sword for a spear. Yeah, he, he's hunting a, a killer whale. Yeah, killer killer whale is the latest Auguste threat, and it happens in his freaking fate episodes. It's just a killer whale who's like echolocation levels buildings. So anyway, um, but yeah, in terms of just effect on the game, it's like, all right, so here we have a water defense character, and you're like, uh-oh. Oh, oh, yeah. That's a lot of characters. He's, he's in Spear, where you're like, uh, okay. That's also a lot of characters in uh, in water. And so you're just like, all right, let, what does he actually do? So he uses his, uh, his nuke on CA. Okay, sure. He does two, uh, his CA... And his nuke will both do... Uh, it'll refresh his jammed. So it's like, okay, he wants to jam himself. That's fine. He does two hits of nuke. Um, did you look up what the cap on this nuke is? Let's see. Is 420 it hits. 420 per hit? Yeah. That's pretty average. It's good. All right. I mean, he's going to keep keep getting jammed, and jammed is, like, pretty good. Well, especially with his sec uh, his third ability here. Where he hits himself for sixty percent, he of gains his current health. He gains ten thousand as a shield, and then he gets eighty percent chaser until he takes like real actual damage. Which is pretty good. It's pretty good so when he his uh, passive only eats away eight hundred a, a turn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, out of this ten thousand shield, he'll lose eight hundred of it a turn, and it's just like, you know, <laughs> that's not much at all. Like, if you've played Isaac before, even though Isaac does have that passive that caps the amount of damage he can take while the shield's up, it takes a lot to take Isaac's shield down. And that's, what, 8,000? It's less. I love playing with Isaac. I love that character. Um, Let's see. Isaac's shield is 6,000. Yeah, and, and Isaac also caps the damage he could take to 5,000, mm -hmm. I think. Speaking of which, <laughs> so Seaside Defender, he caps the incoming fire damage he takes at 5k, so it takes at least two hits to take off his shield. Yep. Which is a cool um, design. Also, the fact that uh, his Dragon Spirit gives him 30% perpetuity mod and 100% defense. 100% defense and uh, guaranteed double attack, but guaranteed double attack is kind of minor these days. However, also, when he's below fifty percent health, he gets twenty-five meter every turn, with which to he already eats away sixty percent of his health. Yeah, so he just turns himself on immediately, and then his skill two, uh, the part that we haven't even looked at yet. So it's it's a nuke. It's a seven hundred and thirty cap, which is a pretty big one. So it it'll hit for about the same as the Zvi harpoon you're in before you get into supplemental damage. Where uh, the the skill one will take over. He gives fire switch for three turns. 
and 20% fire cut. I admit, if you compare, combine him with Honore, you can have 100% uptime on fire switch. I'm looking forward to this. This this is actually if I get this character, I'm taking Andre to level 130. I'm I'm just saying that right now. If I get this character, I'm holding you to this, by the way. Oh, I, I was already going to do it. It's just that I was going to be doing even stupider things that weren't nearly as practical because I'm just still trying to find a way to make true work. Uh, I'm like, what if we had this character who was actually blank? <laughs> Except for his ability to copy another character's skill and get a hundred percent uptime on fire switch. It's like why don't I play Siegfried and that it's actually a character while also doing the same things. You know, I totally forgot that True came out. It's been a True's while. a fun character because he can he's in an element where he can copy both of his uh uh Eternals level one thirty abilities. So that that still has a ton of potential. However, that's potential. Sigman is Sigman, and he's all he's out of the box doing doing his thing. He's double attacking. He's got uh, double defense. He's fire switching for your team. He's got a little fire cut for when uh, uh, Andre's like fire switch and cut are down. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Yeah, this he just doesn't cool work game. with his. He doesn't work with his uh, hollow sky, which is unfortunate, but whatever. Manageable because hollow sky spear has honestly stopped being anything but a main hand. Also true. All right, but the the last thing I want to mention about Sigman is that he is now, I believe. Tell me if I'm wrong. I believe he's the first male character to hit the fourth element. Because uh, I let's see here. Because Lancelot's in three. He's water, wind, and fire. Wait, what about is Land Vane? Yeah, Land Vane summer Land are hot. fire also. Water. Aren't they? Uh, yeah. Well, was, I think. Well, let me check. Yeah, Land Land Vane summer are. Or, oh no, it's he's or, Lancelot and Vane are earth. So Lancelot technically is in four, maybe three and a half. On, we're on a technicality here. <laughs> so Siegfried has four SSRs in four elements now and the fire one's amazing the wind one is okay earth one's actively good and now this water one is pretty good so two to go two to go Sigman uh, he's missing light and dark and I'm it's very very easy to build a light Siegfried just uh, sorry both he, it's very easy to build a dark Siegfried justification too I'm looking forward to I it. I forget too. who else is in the running for uh, for being Avatar status. There's Clarice and Cag. Uh, Clarice and Cagliostro are very close. Um, Zeta is getting very close. We're only missing Wind Zeta now. You mean so, we're we're missing wi Wind in uh, Society? Yes. There's there's no Wind Society characters that I know of. Period. Ha! <sighs> All right. Anyway, so uh, I I really do hope I get Water Siegfried because he seems much more fun and less like of a blunt instrument than than Ill Not. You know something we haven't had in a while, actually. Now What's I think that? about it, we haven't had a surprise deck yet in uh, like a couple months. Yeah, there is very likely going to be a surprise during because it's so it is uh, the pretty much the start of summer vacation in Japan right now. And last year, over the like mid July to mid August period, Grand Blue Fantasy gave away sixty nine thousand crystals to players. I do remember this. They gave away so much, <laughs> and they gave us three thousand for Uminohi yesterday. Today's Sports Day. They didn't give anything away for Sports Day last year. They might this year. Who knows? But also, um, they traditionally at the very beginning of August have a surprise ticket, usually right around the summer stream. I can finally get a ticket for Tico. Let's go. <laughs> Thick thighs saving lives. I need a doctor. Sure <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So that's in, well, we'll call that in two weeks. Two weeks is about a good time frame to call that next surprise ticket. And then we'll also know who the next summer characters are, and we'll know what the next piece of seafood we're fighting against is. Ah, uh, yes, as they're, uh, as in, uh, we're going to get uh, my beloved Auguste back. We're getting my beloved Auguste back. I mean, the last story event we were fighting against um, staying too long in a very cold pool and um, some guy who keeps blowing uh, smoke at you, who just keeps waving heat at you. I mean, it was a good event. I loved that event. <laughs> my, my favorite events in Granblue Fantasy is when you see other characters interact with other characters. I agree with that. Like when Meg was just going through and going, how is this normal to you? This is freaky. Don't worry, Meg became her own prince. <laughs> it's fine. All right, so the last thing to talk about isn't really about being inside the game necessarily. Um, it is tangentially related to Unite and Fight in that here. Let's uh, let's switch screens a little bit here. And I like KMR. This is definitely... This is partially KMR's fault, but there's like... Alright, so what you're looking at right now is Mochishi Okani, who is a very, very new VTuber. Very new. Uh, as far as I know, the account was created in June of this year, on June 14th. So, like, 30-some days old. And Mochishi Okani did one of those, you know, stupid social media challenges, right? Like, we've seen it before, where it's like, if this gets 3,000 likes and retweets... I'm going to, you know, ask blah, blah, blah out on a date. I'm going to get a tattoo. I'm going to cosplay whatever, right? And Mochi Shiokani says, Oh, for the number of retweets and likes on this tweet, I will farm meat in Unite and Fight because uh, Mochi Shiokani plays a lot of Grand Blue. Like, a lot, a lot of Grand Blue. Mm -hmm. KMR takes notice, retweets it. Within two hours, it's at 4,000. In After one hour, the crab says... Uh, you know, this seems like a really low number, so I'm going to multiply by 10. This goes viral. Um, I take a little bit of culpability on extending it to the English-speaking language uh, community for Grand Blue Fantasy. And the crab said, okay, I have to, for my own health and sanity, I have to put a cutoff to this. Uh, this tweet will be up for three hours, and then I will take account, and then the number that was the final number was 99,950 so 9,955 combined likes and retweets this is like this is crazy in a bunch of ways um i always tell everybody on the show i tell you all the time i tell our crew all the time i tell people who uh, watch this show um Take breaks. Don't burn out. Like, play reasonably. This is not your job, unless it is your job. But that's which is funny because my job also tells me this, but also says this is your still this is still your job. But don't right. don't burn yourself out. <laughs> this is why all evolutions converges into crabs. That's the third time I've heard this about Mochi Shiokani. So look, just put the <laughs> dancing crab gif. Right, and so the thing is that's like, this is. Something that is incredibly unhealthy to do, but has is the intersection of two very unhealthy reward systems, right? So it's super hard to make it as a VTuber. It's much less a VTuber who isn't like a pretty anime girl. You are this this VTuber is literally a crab. Crab's great. The I crab the is crab. great. But like everybody who's been checking in on this crab has been asking, like, this one says, is your throat okay? Like, have you been eating? Have you been sleeping? <laughs> because the first marathon was for the entirety of prelims, which is 29 hours, 29 hours straight of farming meat, of um, tap on the load screen, attack, reload, go to the bookmark, tap on the, the next Huang Long, click it, repeat, and this was done for 29 hours straight. This is now the, let's see, fourth hour that this crab has been going for this current uh, marathon. And then uh, the crab has been, you know, going on to, say, like, 13 hours and plus is going to be a new link because 12 hours is the limit for these, like, videos. 
and it's just like there's there's something distressing about being part of just like a what it feels a little bit like bullying of just saying oh yeah haha ha, here's another you know 20 uh 20 crab meats that you have to uh, gather here's another you know 10 push-ups for me hitting this retweet or whatever right but it's I like don't know. Stre streaming culture is always been questionable at best and that's the thing like streaming it's just it's not just streaming culture but it's also just like getting attention in the internet era where it's like this stunt and i'm, I'm calling it a stunt this stunt this challenge this marathon has gone has taken this crab from having uh, when I first checked the channel, the, the channel had 60 subscribers on YouTube. As of right now, there is now 1,720 subscribers. I'm, I'm guilty of that. I'm one of the subscribers. I mean, it, it's one of those things where it's like, it's it's an unhealthy relationship between entertainer and, like, audience. Um... And I'm not saying it's unhealthy as in, like, this is going to lead to stalking or anything like that. It's a different kind of unhealthy where this crab made a very public, very stupid statement and is now trying to find a way to stick to it as closely as possible because if she fails at it, then she's going to lose a lot of uh, a lot of these followers gained. Because, you mm -hmm. know, this is something like what? Let's see. Um, let me pull out the, the calculator for a second here because, uh, let's see here. So started with so this is 1720 followers started with 60 this is 2866 percent growth in a week right and this is the kind of thing that streamers will do in order to get attention like you can can't count the number of like i'm gonna do a 24-hour marathon right like here, here's a 24-hour stream uh, for the Hollow Lives for the Niji Sanjis. It'll be like I'm going to sing the same song over and over for eight hours, and you know those aren't healthy in the long run, but they're they're famous, <laughs> and that's that's dangerous in in terms of just be, like rewarding that. But it's like it's. it's hard to get any kind of traction as a streamer of any kind. Like this is coming from someone who's streaming to 30 viewers right now. Right. And then when yeah. this gets uploaded to YouTube, it'll get another couple hundred views. And then. I mean, we, 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 we both you and me know that your peak is usually the translation streams, which is in the thousands. And there's going to be one of those in a week and a half, but yeah, like in order to feel like there is any kind of success, in streaming like i've talked to streamers who have anxiety when they're offline right they're just anxious because as soon as they're offline they know that the numbers go back down and they're just like i don't know if i can sustain this unless i'm always online unless i'm doing this 29 hour marathon and then going to be doing it for 17 hours every day of unite and fight like wouldn't that level of extreme dare lead to abnormal expectations to keep that fame Quite possibly, yeah. Like, it's unhealthy. It's, it's really unhealthy. unhealthy. Like, uh, there's a lot of streamers who have to just stop doing 24-hour incentives. Like, do you do you remember when Ludwig was doing this, where every donation extended the stream? Yeah, yeah, they cut it off eventually. Yeah, because like in, in less Ludwig's, than a month. Yeah, Ludwig is one of the biggest streamers on the internet, and he's just like, okay, this is really unhealthy. I'm going to have to stop this. And, you know, but it's also that kind of stuff, like that kind of stuff gets coverage. It gets eyeballs and eyeballs are the most important currency on the Internet. Yeah, there's a lot of videos to talking about it, too. Yeah. And so, I yeah, it's there. That's one half of the conversation. The other half of the conversation is GBF is just like in it. it Unite and Fight specifically creates an environment where this is not only possible, but rewarded. Like, if this was a 29-hour replicard sandbox, um, like, run, I mean, it's something that GBF allows. 
it's not something that GBF really rewards the same way Unite and Fight does. Mm -hmm. Like, if I did 29 hours of Replicard Sandbox, I would come out of that thing with, like, 30 Ideans? Maybe? Maybe 20 Ideans? Depends on your luck. Yeah. It's like, I don't know how much coverage they got, but I was really scared when I heard they were doing it, despite me watching that person prior. Yeah. the, And so, yeah, like, this is an intersection of two things, and my point on this, all of this, is just to keep hammering on the table and banging on the table and saying, take breaks, please. Like, this is unhealthy. And, you know, if the game itself has to build in break points, right? Like KMR has said before, um, stamina is not infinite, so that there is this at least a little bit of a slowdown when you have to use the potion to say, hey, this is a resource I'm consuming in order to keep playing. Maybe I can slow down on playing and get back to this tomorrow or the next week or something like that. And, yeah. Yeah. I don't know yeah. where I'm going to go with this further, but please, Take everybody. Be healthy. Please, everybody. Like, this kind of thing burns you out as a person, burns you out as a player, burns you out as an entertainer. Like... Yeah. Anyway, Godspeed, Little Crab, you are at 33,000 meat, so you are a third of the way to your 99,950 goal. Um, I, I, I will keep tra tabs on this Little Crab. I don't know if I'll promote this nearly as much as I did at the beginning. Anti-poop socking, yeah, yeah. I mean, every, a lot of games have to build this in to say, hey, stop playing. This isn't healthy. Like, we need you to Stop playing this game so that you don't just burn out and stop playing. Like, every MMO has anti, uh, like, grind measures built in, you know? It's whether it's, like, dungeon lockouts, raid timer lockouts, like, respawn timers on certain things. Like, just, just stop. Take breaks. You know, GBF just shuts you out for seven hours. Maybe it should be more. They cut off an entire day of Unite and Fight. But, you know, there's still this. There's still this, DJ. I, I wish the best for the crab. I, too, wish the best for the crab. I hope I hope the crab goes on to be a healthy little crab. All right. Um, that went unusually deep for one of these episodes, DJ, but I, I, I really felt strongly about this. So thanks for letting me just, like, yell at I you mean, with you, this. You deal with, uh, like, those analytics and stuff. In the first place. Yeah, yeah, I talk to a lot of streamers at my job. So, anyway, um, that is it for this week. So, next week, the following things will happen. Number one, we'll have had my beloved you stay back. We'll have the cow skin. That's a, I'm excited for that one. Um, we will know what the next event is, and we'll actually already have started the event I think so let's see that'll be the 30th Japan time so yeah we'll have already started the next event and I'll have one foot in Hawaii I thought I, you don't fly, I thought you don't land until August uh, I will have one foot in Hawaii because it, as of next week's show uh, it will be 30 hours until I fly to Hawaii ah so you know take breaks like me I'm flying to Hawaii I'm bringing to my phone with cover me. our stream later. Maybe, maybe we do have a plan B. The plan B is to have Pocky cover it, but Pocky and I talked about it, and we're probably still doing it on this channel. But we'll see. Anyway, summer streams coming. Got lots of giveaways. Woo! I'm super excited for the Grand Blue TV Shopping Network. Kalahara and, and Rikasama. Let's go. It's always feel good. I love <laughs> it when it happens. Hell yeah, the the two of them just ad living back and forth at each other. But wait, there's more. Ooh. <laughs> and yeah, we'll probably have uh, info on things like the su the next summer campaign because the next summer campaign, let's see. The current summer campaign goes until what date again? It was was it August 1st when they start the second uh... August 1st. Yeah. So we'll know what the uh the next next phase of the summer celebration is going to be as of August 1st. 
So until then, thank you for joining me, DJ. Let's go watch some Street Fighter. All right, see you. Uh, see you guys next week. See you next week, everyone. Remember, remember, as much as people will yell at you about this, whatever VTuber that you've watched this clip of, Unite and Fight is not your duty. This is still a game. Yes, there's good rewards for playing this game a lot. But but be healthy, everybody. Jesus. Do not be the little crab. Little crab is, is Ganbaru, but also is also Karoshi. Alright, anyway. Good night, guys. Thanks for watching. Later.